This is Brian Hahn. He is the owner of Fins and Fire Rocketry. Um, and him and I have teamed up to produce the Apogee Simple GPS Tracker. So, Brian, tell us about the tracker. What does it do and what makes it different? Uh, well, this tracker we built to be <coughs> a kind of a simple to use tracker in most GPS tracking systems that are available out there for helping you find your rocket. Um, you know, you need a cell phone or you need computers and all kinds of different pieces of equipment to get, be able to get the data from your rocket and that might be fine in a lot of, you know, higher end applications where you want to log a bunch of data and, and altitudes and all kinds of other things, but if a person just wants to fly their rocket, go find it, this might be an, an item that you might be interested in. And all it is is just a handheld unit which has everything you need in it. You don't need a cell phone or computer or Garmin. A lot of people use Garmin's. And then there's a component that goes in the rocket that transmits to this antenna um, and allows you to display the, the landing information where your rocket landed at and track it down so you can get it and fly it again. Yeah. Now this is just an an SS Patriot rocket here, um, and as you can see in the nose cone, because on an SS Patriot typically you have to add weight to the nose to make it stable. So we just decided to go ahead and put the the tracking board into the nose cone. Um, so on this side you can see we have the the GPS and radio transmitter section, and then on the back side we just have you know, a single LiPo battery to power it. Uh, yes, it's actually. Not really. The only thing that you would need to do is mount it somewhere in, a, in your rocket, and the kit comes complete with the mounting standoffs and screws and everything um, that you'd need to just power this on and and make it work for you. Yes, pretty much. Is there an antenna on here that I really have to be careful with? Uh, the antenna is r right here, and it's actually a helical antenna. A lot of people use whip antennas or those type of things, but those get a little long and unwieldy. Uh, so we went with a helical antenna. The only thing that you probably want to be care careful of is, is it's not a problem in this application because of the way the wiring goes, but if you have a, a servo bay or an eBay or anything with a, a lot of wires going all different places, um, even if you're using a whip antenna, for example, you want to try to keep your wires away from your antennas because your antennas are making fairly substantially large electric fields to transmit through the air and they will couple back onto your wires if you have them really close to your antenna. So it's always a good general wiring practice rule to keep uh, your, an your antenna and your wires as far apart as, as possible and in a lot of smaller rockets that's a little tricky. but all we can do is what we can do. Uh, well, the range of any radio system is actually set not only by the power that you're transmitting with and your transmitting antenna, but also your, the sensitivity of your receiver and your receiving antenna. Um, for this particular setup with the, the short whip antenna here, we can probably get up to at least a couple miles of, of range through air. Um, and if need be, this antenna can be unscrewed off here. It's just an, an SMA connector and you can screw in, you know, Yagi antennas, other types of antennas, high gain base station antennas. Uh, there's a, a proliferate of antennas available on the internet or different places that you can attach to this, this unit here. Uh, yeah, now this one here is turned on, um, and actually we're indoors, so we won't be able to actually make it work that that uh, that well because we can't get satellite locks in here, and the distances are kind of short. If you if you lose your rocket from here to here, your your this probably won't help you, um, because the resolution of this thing is somewhere around about ten feet. Uh, it'll. Yeah, yeah, otherwise you'll end up, I mean, that's just a function of the GPS system and the way it works, its resolution is 10 feet, so. Uh, but this one is showing right now that it's waiting for a signal from, 
from the rocket transmitter, which is not turned on right now. Um, and we can actually show you what it goes through. When you first power on this unit, what ends up happening is the handheld itself uh, uh, has to get a GPS lock, so it goes through that process of the handheld getting a GPS lock. And then it switches to this screen here, which is uh, the rocket GPS lock, which is it's waiting for some data to be transmitted from here. And both of those steps require that uh, you s the, the system can see five satellites. So for example, if we turn this one on, it'll go through a startup screen, and then you'll see that it, it uh, will show you the frequency, the base frequency that it's operating at, and then it says right here, I don't know if you can read it or not, but it says waiting for a local GPS lock. And then down here at the bottom, it shows you how many satellites it sees. Right now it sees zero, and it'll probably always see zero in uh, this indoor environment that we're in. But what I did is I took this one outside and got it to go past the local screen and go to the rocket screen because I got a local GPS lock on that unit. And now this one is, is waiting for, for the rocket to lock, which it unfortunately never will in here. But if we had a paper clip, now we're messing up the video. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now there is an interesting feature on this because, uh, and, and it was added so that we didn't have to wait for a rocket lock, lock forever, but if it is in the rocket lock screen, um, there is a button in the back or a hole in the back that you can put a piece, a small piece of wire or a paper clip through or something. And uh, let's see if I can feel it with a small wire. And if you, there's a button in there that you can feel the detent and you push in that button like a lot of electronics equipment and then it will actually skip past waiting for the rocket and go to the operational screen. So now there's two operational screens. This the screen here is the compass mode screen and as you can see if we turn it uh, the compass arrow is turning um, and since we don't have valid rocket locks or GPS locks on the local unit, you can see both of these squares here are, are not filled in, which means that basically all this data is invalid. Um, if we were outdoors and actually using this in a, a real rocket launch, we would want to make sure that both of those squares are solid filled in black, in which case that would be an indicator that all the data that we are seeing is valid. Yes, and not only do they see GPS, but they have a good fix on their location. Okay. So, um, in, the, in the way the GPS system works, it's quite interesting. The longer they're on, like I say, this, this unit and this unit, in order that for them to switch to these screens, need to see five satellites. Well, just because they see five satellites doesn't necessarily mean they have a good fix. Um, they just happen to be seeing them and trying to zero in on them. And as they see more and more satellites, um, their fix gets better and better and better. And so if we, if we had a good lock on these right now, they might be saying that they're like 60 feet apart from each other But when we first came to these screens. But as time goes by and as your rocket starts flying and moving around, as you start moving around, around they'll track closer and closer and closer as they find more and more and more satellites. And, and they use the relative motion of, of the, the units to help them zero in on exactly what the two latitude and longitude locations are. And so to find the rocket, we just kind of walk in the direction of the arrow? Is that the uh, general gist of this? Uh, yeah, that's, that's all you do. Once you, once you have good locks and everything comes up and you don't have to cheat the system with the paper clip or whatever, then you'll have two solid squares there. And we can actually turn this one on. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. It won't get a GPS lock because um, we're, we're indoors again, but it will transmit. And every time that this unit transmits to this unit, you, you'll, you'll hear an audible tone. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I'll be quiet. And what that beeping means is that everything is working and you are... Well, it's in this piece. Correct. Yeah, and it actually starts beeping when it switches to 
trying to find uh, a lock on the rocket part. So it would be the screens before this one, actually. Um, but then once you get a good lock, that's all you do, uh, is you basically take this and you follow the arrow to your rocket. Now the best way to do that is not hold it close to your body because you have zippers and belt buckles and all that. It is a tilt compensated compass and it's got nine degrees of freedom, so it's a very accurate compass. And then you would just uh, hold it out a little bit like you would a compass. Um, read the distance perhaps, maybe walk three quarters of the way there. You don't have to, you, you know, you don't want to get to be like a cow where you're just following this and walking off of a cliff, right? You have to enjoy the scenery <laughs> around you and that type of stuff. And so just every once in a while, check it, make sure you're on a good heading for your rocket. It'll show you the distance. Right now you can see the distances are invalid on this. It's saying negative 22,000 feet because we don't have good locks. Uh, but then uh, if you want to see the latitude and the longitudes in GPS mode, all you need to do is turn this upside down and turn it back over and it will switch to the latitude and longitude screens. Okay, and then that's, it shows you both, I don't know if you can see this, it shows you both the, the local, which is this unit, and the remote unit. They're all reading zeros now, which is why our distance is so far off because this has not got a good satellite lock yet. And then if you want to switch back to the compass screen, oh, you just turn it over and flip it back and it'll flip back to the compass mode screen. And so that's pretty much all you have to do to operate this system is you just mount the board and power it up and put some batteries in this and power it up, wait till you have good GPS lock, lock fly your rocket, and then this follow the arrow and it'll track you, you know, right to typically within about five or 10 feet of where your rocket landed at. Certainly, yeah, I hope it helps out a lot of customers. It's uh, very simple to use, as the name implies, and um, in all of our testing, it seems to work quite well. We've flown rockets uh, up to k size motors on this, up over 10,000 feet, and uh, tracks us right to them, so.